Okay, welcome to this webinar on nine steps to creating real value for your bookkeeping business. It's a, a summary of um, what I think is important for bookkeeping businesses to, to understand and, and know. Uh, so let me just tell you a little bit about myself. Firstly, I, I know many of you are on here that would know of me already, but some of you that, that don't, some names I, I'm not familiar with. Uh, so I, I did build a, a successful bookkeeping business over 15 years. Um, I built it up from just doing it as a job, as an employee, as a contractor uh, for many years, um, working from the home office. Um, it wasn't until the past, you know, the last five or seven years that I took it seriously, moved out of the home office and, um, and then um, really changed my mindset around um, building the business. So I built it to uh, over 120 clients, up to eight staff at one stage. And, you know, over that time I did have many growth spurts and made many mistakes along the way, which, you know, I'm hoping I can um, help you avoid those so that you don't experience, you know, many of the same mistakes. I did engage a mentor five years before I sold my business just so that he could help me clarify what I wanted um, and know how to get there. So help me plan, set some goals, um, understand what my end game was and when that was going to be, just to make it clearer on where I was going. So I did sell, sell my business in 2015 uh, with a new owner taking over the staff, the office and the established business name and, you know, all the IP um, so it was a really awesome um, sale. It went quite quickly um, and I got, um, I think, a good price for it. Uh, since then, I wanted to tell my story. So I wrote a book, Grow Profit Exit, um, that showed my journey of um, how I grew my business and what I went through, um, some experiences, and I just felt as if I wanted to, to, to share my story. Um, Writing that book made me realise that I can actually help other bookkeeping businesses uh, grow their business and fast track their results. So that's what I'm now focusing on um, my energies on, assisting bookkeepers uh, grow their successful business without, you know, experiencing, you know, perhaps some of the, the growing pains that you, you can experience. So let's, let's get into it. So the, the uh, nine steps to creating real value within your business is, uh, these steps, which we'll go through each one of these. So, you know, having a business model, planning is very critical and it's got to be done right at the start. Just checking in with the finance side of things, so that your pricing and, um, uh, you know, budgeting and things like that. Having a sales and marketing strategy um, and just a way of onboarding clients, you know, we're going to um, know who our ideal clients are and, you know, who we're looking out for. You need to automate your systems um, and, and get your workflow management um, softwares up and running. Staffing, we can hire any anybody that wants to come and work with us, but it's not always a good idea. So um, to add value to your business, you really need to have the right staff involved. Uh, leadership, so, you know, we go into business um, as bookkeepers. We really don't need know how to run a, a business, so leadership is really important. And then knowing what your exit strategy is, and you know perhaps when it's going to be, or at least preparing for it well in advance of, of a sale. So, firstly, the, the business model. It's I think the first two um, modules here or, or sections here are are really important to map out for your future business. So you need to know why you're in business. So um, what gets you out of bed in the morning? Um, what is so important to you that keeps you going even though you might, you know, have some um, difficult clients or, um, you know, people not paying you, you know, having some staffing issues? Why is it that you are in business? So you really want to um, identify that very early on uh, and just get clear that you are a business owner and not an employee or a contractor that you're actually running a business. So it's a mindset shift. Um, and I experienced that when I moved out of my office, uh, that I finally took my business seriously. So it was like I had to pay a rent. I had to pay my um, my wage. Otherwise, there's no point in being business. So um, identifying what that why is. And for me, it was to sell my business in five years' time. 
at a um, an ideal price. So that's why I was in business. I was trying to achieve that um, asset that I could sell that wasn't so reliant on me. What's your vision for your business? So, so no, you need to do a little bit of homework around this to, to realise what you actually want for your business. We can all go into bookkeeping business and, and do what we, you know, what we love to do and, you know, helping clients and um, providing them service. But what's your vision? Like, you know, what, what is it that you want to get out of your business? What is it that you are trying to um, strive for? Is it a business? Is it a half a million dollar business? Is it a business with, you know, one staff or eight staff? Is it a business that has an office um, space that, you know, it's renting or, you know, purchasing office space? Um, is it just a business that just wants to employ yourself, knowing the risks around that? What's your ideal business look like? So we want to sit back and say, okay, what's my ideal day? What do I want to do? I want to start work at 10 o'clock and I want to finish at 4. Um, I want to work with these clients. I want to work, I want to earn this amount of money. You really need to think about these things before you even um, get too involved in growing your business. The, the model is really important because that's what you're going to aspire to. So th this is like, you know, what's going to happen in 20 years or 10 years. Like it, it push it right out, really extend uh, your vision for you know, decades to come. You might not be in business in decades to come, but what do you want your business to go towards? Like do that big-ass goal. Um, you know, dream big. Focus on an end result. Focus on something big. Work your way to it. And that brings us to our, our next um, step, which is all about the planning. So it's really important to know where you are going in your business so that you can create some goals. So if you've got a vision for your business, which which I did was, you know, building a half a million dollar business, having some staff, having office space that I owned that I could then rent out. Um, they were my visions for my business, but I was like a, you know, one staff person. I'd just moved into a rented office with a small amount of space. But my big ass vision was a half a million dollar business with staff to run it and me not be involved. So what did I need to do to plan for that exit, to plan for that, that end game? So firstly, you do need to find time in your day to actually plan it out. So, you know, you need to look at your diary. If you are working on your clients for 30, 40, 50 hours a week, there is no way that you are going to be able to find time within that, those hours, to work on your business. You need at least a half a day a week to work on your business, on your systems, finding out what you want in terms of, you know, your vision and your goals and your clients, etc. everything we're going to go through today. You need time to do that. Otherwise, you're going to continue working those 50, you know, hours a week, every week and not move forward. You're just going to get in that same groundhog day and, you know, just repeat the same stuff over and over again. So once you know where you're going, find some time in your week because, as I was saying, if you're working 50 hours a week and you've got client work, which might be, you know, 70 hours a week, you know you know what I mean, you, you, you only have so many hours a week to charge out, but your clients and everything else that you want to do is in excess of what you're able to handle. So it's just not going to work. So you need to um, set realistic expectations around the work that you're going to do in a week. And then you need to find some time to work on your business, as I say, so you can start working on those goals. So set some long-term goals. So in five years' time, I do want, you know, a $300,000 business. I want two staff and I want to be out of my home office. So then what are your short-term goals to achieve that? So it might be the first year I need to get $80,000 or 100,000 sales. To do that, I'm going to need a half a staff member. So then break it down further into these action steps to achieve those goals. So we're going to go down to what do I need to do in 90 days to achieve that $100,000 result? 
okay, 90 days I need to achieve sales that are going to, you know, be around 30,000 in 90 days. Um, and I know that I need a staff member to help me fulfill this work to reach the 100,000. So, you, you know, you need to do some homework um, around your figures, like how many hours do you work? Say you work 20 hours chargeable, times that by your out, your, um, the rate that you charge or the income that you're getting in. Are you able to get $100,000 just earning by yourself? If not, then you know you need a staff member. So then we set some goals around what staff member you need. So the point here is firstly, know where you're going, set some goals, set some, you know, one year, two year, three year, five year, 10 year goals. Break the one year goals down into 90 day goals. Break that further down into some action steps to achieve. So in 30 days, I need to do this. In 14 days, I need to do this. In seven days, I need to do this. The next, uh, the next step or the next module around this is around your finance. So really know what your finance is. So with this, I mean, what's your, what's your pricing? So with your business model, you get an idea of what your price, pricing method should be, what you're going to be comfortable with. Now, we all know that we can either charge hourly, we can put a fixed rate to it, or we can do value pricing. So think about what your business model is. Am I wanting to just do um, some, you know, a lot of review work, uh, do some business advisory stuff, um, you know, get, create some value for my clients, then create your pricing model around that, whether it is, um, you know, you're doing this amount of bookkeeping, but I'm going to give you this um, business advice for this value. But if you're, you know, if you're not quite at the stage, the maturity of value pricing, you might want to drop it just down to fixed pricing and know that, you know, I'm going to get $500 a month and it's going to include all of this type of work. So know what your pricing method is. And um, we can talk some more in future webinars about, you know, value pricing and fixed pricing. Cre create a profit and loss layout for management reporting. So it might not be the profit and loss layout that you're going to present to the accountant or even the tax office, but put a wage in there for yourself. Your business has to pay yourself a wage. And what is that wage going to be? Is it what you are drawing out of the business at the moment as drawings? Treat it as an expense for now. Put it into the profit and loss layout. I used to put it down below the net profit. Uh, just so that I could show my husband that, okay, my income is this amount of money, but I've taken this amount out so and I'm still profitable. So I can now take out, you know, I used to start with saying $400 a week and then I got up to $1,000 a week. So you want to know that you are a, a cost to the business. The business has to pay you back. And, you know, we all know that we might not get what we deserve out in the market straight away, but you need the mindset to know that your business is going to afford a wage and it's going to increase that wage every year. You are not just going to get what the leftovers are because that, then that's your mindset that you only deserve the leftovers. You need to say, I want a $80,000 wage or a $50,000 wage or a $120,000 wage. Put it into your management reporting in the P&L layout and in your budget. So set some budgets, review your results regularly and gives you a focus of where you are wanting to go. So if you have a, have a goal of $100,000 in the next 12 months, then you need to budget for that. So every month put in a figure of what you need to achieve, review it. Every month, I used to review it just before the end of the month to see if I was on target, and then I would um, uh, go into overdrive almost. Like I'd be aware that, okay, I'm not going to achieve the budget this month. What do I need to do to pick that up? Do I need to go out and get another client? Do I need to bring some more work in so I fix that budget? So it just focuses you a little bit more closely to what your goals are. So you're going to align um, your goals with your actions.
Now, the next, the, the next important thing to, to recognize and to do some work on to add value to your business is around your sales and marketing. So, <clears throat> excuse me, know who your competitors are. Now, I used to find um, I wasn't too concerned about my other competitors, the bookkeeping businesses around me, because there were so many clients, there was so much work out there. I was very confident in what I provided and what I did. So I didn't, I wasn't concerned about the competitors that were around there. But know who your competitors are, know their locations, know, find out a bit about them. So what their services are, what they charge, how they run their business or how they, you know, do their, um, how they receive money, um, <clears throat> look a bit about their business model um, so that you can find your point of difference to the other competitors. So if a client, a small business client, is going to go and Google bookkeeping in their area, who are they going to find and why are you different to all those other people? So although we're not, or, you know, I wasn't um, scared of the competition, I knew I was different for a certain amount of reasons. And one of them was, you know, I've come from a tax accountant background. So, you know, you the, the client was getting, um, they weren't getting tax advice, obviously, but they were getting somebody that knows what a tax accountant wants and is looking for. So that was one of my point of differences. It also became, because I was quite a large practice, I guess, in, you know, five, seven years ago, um, that it was different to bookkeepers that were just uh, sole operators. So that was another one of my point of differences that I could, you know, sell to a client. I have a business. I have several staff. If one of them goes sick, you can contact another one. There's always somebody in the office that can answer calls, that can, you know, do um, anything that you require. So that was one of my point of differences. So find out what your point of differences is. Um, one of my clients that I'm working with at the moment, her point of difference is that she is uh, just about to run off on a boat. So her lifestyle is going to be her point of difference, her her remote bookkeeping, her remote services, um, and, you know, especially around the lifestyle. So if her clients are wanting, aspiring to the same type of lifestyle, that they can really relate to it, then uh, they uh, would be attracted to her business. You might have, uh, you know, a niche that's your point of difference. You might be within an industry or a certain size business, whatever it is, that's your point of difference to other businesses. And um, we're going to market and sell towards that. Also know who your ideal client is and what their pain points are. So when you're looking for your ideal client, it also comes back to, to your business model. So if your business model is you just want one staff and you don't want a lot of bookkeeping, you're just going to be doing business review stuff, well, then you don't want the mum and dad bookkeeping businesses. You don't want the um, construction workers. You you know, you might want a niche in the professional services or the hospitality. So, you know, you if you have a niche, well, then that makes it really clear. But your ideal client might be somebody that is, um, you know, over 50 is, um, you know, growing their business and they're proactive in their business. Or, you know, they might be 30, 30 years of age. So they might be, you know, um, have more uh, awareness of the of IT and um, really involved in their business and in growth and in new ideas and innovation. So just think about who the, the client is that you want to um, work with. And, you know, um, List down all the attributes about that client so that you can target them when you are networking or, or doing some marketing or, you know, just talking to the, the person down the street or the shop down the street, you know, that you know that that shop might not be your ideal client. But when you're talking, you are more aware, more focused on who you want. And if you know their pain points, well, then you're going to target those pain points you know are they wanting a lifestyle are they wanting to have some integrity in their figures if they're wanting to grow maybe they want a cash flow or um you know so know what their pain points are so that you can sell towards that and network clients uh, if you are growing if you are wanting more clients 
um, and you are not getting them from referrals and, you know, the organic white method, then you need to go out and network. Um, so go out to, you know, your local council, um, uh, you know, meetups in your area. There are, you know, entrepreneurial meetups. Um, you know, there are the traditional ones like the BNI or the networking groups around with small businesses. So get out and talk to people. Um, now, you're not always selling in these network environments, but you you are focusing on your ideal client. And if you come across an ideal client, well, then maybe you'd like to organise a one-on-one -on -one with them. So always be aware of who you're talking to, what you're talking about, the, you know, the talk that you are doing. Make sure that it is related to your business model and the clients that you're trying to focus. Okay, the next one, next one is all about the clients themselves. So now that we have some idea of, you know, who the client is, then we want to automate the whole process. So we want a scoping document um, and quoting quoting documents as well around the, your ideal client. So you might have questions you want to ask your client that sort of suggests, are they the right client for me? Um, so, again, you need to go back and do your homework, write out a list of scoping and, you know, we do it every, every time we meet a client. We know exactly what we need to ask them. So put it in a document, automate it, then we can, you know, hand that over to an admin staff or somebody else that can do the automation and onboard them. So we want to also automate the onboarding process. So, you know, we've got our document. It's totally filled out, consistent with every other client. Hand it over to somebody, you know, hopefully you can engage an admin person um, to put that through the system, add it to your database, add it to your, your logins, adding it to, um, you know, your workflow management software, setting up your jobs and all that. You also want to rate your existing clients. Now, I know a lot of bookkeepers out there um, are pretty much accepting any client because they're after work and, um, you know, the money and they just need the work to, you know, perhaps to provide to other staff members and those type of things. So, but they might not be your ideal client. So you might want to rate your existing clients from an A to a D, so from an awesome to a dead client. Get rid of those dead clients. So if you can identify ones that don't appreciate you, um, that don't pay you on time, that don't provide you with the information, that you know you just generally don't enjoy working with then then um, get rid of them and replace them with your ideal client so it's okay to get rid of those bad clients good clients if you know who they are and you focus on them they will come so it's, it's okay to let some of them go Okay, so the, the, next, the next one we're going to talk about is creating automated systems. So we want to set up a, a workflow management software. So I think this is really critical for bookkeeping business that you need to automate your processes. So we want to uh, have online software that is going to put all of your database into so that it gets out of your head. You don't want to be remembering all the information about your client. You need to put it into a system that um, that you can scale with, that when you engage staff that they don't need to keep asking you questions. They're just going to be going to that software and know the answers. So whatever it is that you know about your client, put it down on a document put it down into a management online software. And there's a few of them out there. Like I do train in Zero Practice Manager, but there's the Carbon, Asana, Insightly. There's a few online softwares that do suit bookkeeping businesses. Uh, so I do recommend that you get off Excel or writing bits of paper down. Um, making lists of, of things that need to be done and who they need to be done for or um, uh, your whiteboard. So ideally, um, in, you know, look at a software and implement a software. 
document and automate every process that you do. So if you are, you know, we, we start with onboarding a client, so we're going to document and process everything you do there. Maybe if you do a review on a, a Zero or MYAB file or whatever, whatever software you choose, document what you do. Put down your checklist. Even for individual clients, the, the bookkeeping that you do for individual clients, create your checklists for them so that everything is out of your head. This is the only way that you're going to be able to scale is to get everything out of your head because my recommendation is that you move off the books as much as you can so you get to a stage where you no longer charge a bookkeeping rate. You only work at a consulting rate. So you have bookkeepers working at the bookkeeping rate, but you put your price up to the extent where you no longer do data processing. And it will take you some time. It might take you a few years to get there. But that is the flow that we need to get to, is work yourself out of a job. So by automating every process, getting everything out of your head, and again, this doesn't happen quickly. It's going to take some time in writing up a checklist for every staff member. Um, if you're doing a BAS or some compliance work, write up a checklist of what you do for that one and, and make it stick. Like you know, there's so many times that I wrote up checklists and I'd forget where I'd filed them or I'd deleted them or, you know, whatever USB I put them on. Um, and it wasn't until I engaged a workflow management software or implemented a software system that, I felt secure that everything out of, was out of my head in the one place that was safe, accessible by my staff, and I could continue to tweak and evolve with, but it was a start. It just got me off the um, off the manual process, off the, you know, waking up in the middle of the night and thinking, did I do this or has so-and-so checked this bit? So if it's in the system then you can go back in and check the, you know, your checklist and so, and so on. So everything you do, even when you're putting a staff member on, automate that process. So here is the list of questions you're going to ask them. This is what you're going to assess them with. This is the advertising you're going to use. This is how you're going to ask them the questions. Um, onboarding a staff, exiting a staff, exiting a client, everything we do over and over again, put it in a... Um, a document or a checklist so that it's automated. And when you get to a stage where you can engage an admin person and it might only be 10 hours a week, then they can manage all of this and you can get off the books and go find more clients, work on your business and, and really, you know, create that business that you can um, sell and scale and, you know, make it profitable, maximise the profits. That's what we're all about. We don't want to sit here doing 30 hours a week and only getting paid for 20, um, writing clients' work off, you know, all of that stuff that does get involved <clears throat> in all of the mistakes that we, we do at the start. Find some other tools also that are going to aid your automation. So things like, you know, Receipt Bank or HubDoc, um, you know, Direct Debit Systems, IntegraPay, <coughs> excuse me, Integra Pay or um, Easy Debit um, for your direct, your your payments, practice ignition, whatever it is that, that you choose, go out and find some tools to aid your automation. So if you have a issue, if you have a challenge, if you've got a, a blockage in your business, find out how to automate it. Go find, even if you don't know how to do it, find somebody that knows the answer. So don't be afraid to go out and um, find people that can help you. Contract out for, you know, a couple of hours. Get other people to, to do some work for you. Outsource it. Um, whether it's in Australia or overseas, it, it does not matter. Outsource some of your work and get the stuff done. Otherwise, you won't get it done, believe me. And you will just, you'll get more frustrated and you will stay in exactly the same position you are now in six months' time if you don't move on. Staff. So I think in growing a business and in, in, in having a, a business that you can sell, you need staff. 
Um, if people are buying your business, they're not going to want to buy um, your you being dependent, being the, the person that, you know, the clients and the business is dependent on. We're going to need to have um, staff there to help you grow and scale. So the, the hardest thing that I, I found was knowing when to hire. So I'm busy, 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 can't afford to put a staff member on in my mind, but I, I don't exactly know when to hire. I've got, you know, I've got extra work, but I don't have enough work for that staff member and I don't want to hand over my work because I want that, that money. It was a catch-22. So you have to know when it is time for your business to hire and it's usually going to be before you actually want to do it. So you have to just trust in your business and in yourself and hire before you can fully um, keep them to capacity. But it's important to, to hire the right person. So not just when to hire but who to hire. So be really aware of um, what you need in your business. I would always go for somebody that... Um, I never put a full-time person on. They were always part-time. Admittedly, some of them were 30 hours. But there was when I hired, it was a mixture of contractors and, and employees, but it was um, that they had some more flexibility. I didn't keep them to their full capacity. If they wanted four days a week, I might give them three days or three and a half days. So it was a, that mixture of just, you know, keeping them just under the hours so that when I got busy, or I got a new client in, then I can up their hours. Um, I'd also go for a mixture of skills and um, experiences and qualifications. So I had a mixture of no quals right through to people that did have a diploma in accounting, people that knew QBO or other softwares that I didn't know, people that were uh, good at advanced Excel and flow charting, um, so and also personality. So you know there were personalities there that just were worker bees. They did not want to be involved in um, advising clients or doing the consulting. They just wanted to put their head down and do the work, and that was fantastic because you in a bookkeeping busy bookkeeping business you need people that are willing to just get in and just do the data processing and and the work, and then you need another level of person to help you do the reviewing and supervising and consulting. So it depends where you are in your business and um, what you need in your business is who you are going to employ. And I, I do have worksheets around how to do this to identify who they are and, um, and how to do it. You also want to delegate quickly. I found there was a client that came on, it was quite a big, client, a bit of rescue work, it was a bit of a mess. I didn't have a staff member available at that time to delegate the work over to. So what I did, I held it to myself. I gave um, staff little bits like you do the AP, you do the bank reconciliation. So I was giving different staff bits of it and over a period of time. So if this, you know, this staff had a few hours this week, just put this stuff in for me. And then, you know, I'd get somebody else to do this to it. So it was all bitsy. It was never, you know, it wasn't efficient. It wasn't effective. So, uh, and this went on for months until the client just um, got very cross that I hadn't solved her, her problem. I hadn't got the figures up to date when she wanted them. And she left in a very, um, uh, she was very disgruntled, obviously, because I hadn't, you know, given her much custom service. So I was devastated to have let a client down and that's because I recognised I didn't delegate it quickly enough. If I had handed that job over to a, a staff member, then they could have managed it within their workload and got stuff done around, you know, what they were doing. So it was, um, it was important to recognise that you cannot do it all. It's not all for uh, you to um, you to do so find you know if you've got staff or outsourcing it if it's you know a lot of my bookkeeping clients that I'm mentoring that they don't have the 
ability to, you know, do some zero setups and do the bookkeeping they're wanting to do and do some res rescue work. So I do recommend outsourcing it. If there is too much going on and you don't have the staff at the moment, rather than uh, letting it go or um, disappointing the client, and because if you've identified they're your ideal client and you do want it, then, you know, outsource some of the work. So you want to delegate it, control it, give them, you know, a scope, what they need to do, et cetera, uh, and get it done. You also want to assess your staff results. So, you know, get set some KPIs around your staff. So you'll always find staff, um, they're either good at some things, not so good at other things. So just keep some KPIs around what's really important to you, what they really need to achieve, whether it's around productivity, profitability, um, you know, their timing, uh, you, you, um, entering information into their, you know, your timesheets, uh, you know, those type of things. So keep some KPIs and assess them uh, regularly. I'd suggest every six months, probably every three months when you've just engaged them just to make sure that they are on track and doing the right thing. Uh, but it's important to, you know, assess these results. And this is a bit around your finance as well in assessing your profitability on things. Okay, so the, the next one, and I've, I've kept this a little bit later in the section, um, even though uh, a lot of probably mentors would or coaches would put it up right at the start. Um, leadership, mindset, it's really important to know um, change your mindset so that you are a leader. As I mentioned before, we go into business wanting to provide excellent bookkeeping service to our clients, providing them with solutions and assist them in growing their business. So we're good at what we do, but we actually don't go into business knowing how to run a business. We can advise clients about, you know, we recognise what's going wrong in their business or, you know, how they should be doing different things, but we don't actually do it for ourselves. So it's really important to um, change that mindset that you are, from this day forward, you are running a business. You are no longer a contractor. You are no longer an employee mindset. You are running a business. So in that you do need to be realistic around your expectations. Don't expect that you can do 60 hours of work in your 30 hours that you've got available. So I, I find one of the things that I do with my mentoring clients is work out what their ideal um, diary is for a week, what are the hours that they want to work, and then talk to me about the hours that you actually do work and, you know, in that ideal diary, what are the things that you want to do? What are the things that you need to do for your business success? As in um, you do need to get off the books for half a day so you can work on your business. So if you factor that in, then you um, are not going to be able to do all of the work that you currently do. And I find it's quite eye-opening um, to realise that, okay, I've got, this amount of clients and they want this amount of hours per month that is 20% more than what I actually can do. So you've got to be realistic with what you are trying to achieve. You've got to check in with your business and assess your profitability and your key performance indicators. So whether it's, you know, how much wage you are taking, you want to check in that you're taking a wage, otherwise why are you in business? If you are providing an excellent service to your clients, you're doing the right thing by them, you're giving them a really good price, um, you're writing time off because you don't feel as if you should charge for that, just check in with that. Like just, you know, why are you doing that? Um, you need to um, be profitable and you need to take your wage out. Your staff need to be productive, so they need to have a productivity rate, whether it is 80%, 90%. Um, your clients need to be profitable, so if you're going onto the fixed fee or value pricing, you need to check in that you are doing the work uh, in a timely manner, um, that you, you, know, you are keeping to all your 
compliance deadlines, you know, and if you're not, find solutions for what you need to do around improving that key performance indicator. So it's not just a matter of setting a key a KPI around what you're doing at the moment. Set it to a point where you've got to achieve it. So whether it is even your your budget, you know, your target, your gross sales target. Um, whatever it is, just set it a bit higher than what it is at the moment and, and try and you've got to go towards achieving those things. But as long as you've got a little checklist, it might only be, you know, five or six things. Yep, profit's good this this month. Uh, you know, I've got my gross sales on target. The Maybe the staff's productivity is a bit down, so find out why, see if you can improve it. Um, also know both your client and employee, the satisfaction um, levels that they have. You know, are you getting feedback from your clients to say um, that, you know, this isn't being done on time? Are they whinging about something? Um, are, are you providing them with the very best service you can? Are you wowing them? Um, are they telling you you are wowing them? Just checking with your clients and, and also your employees. I used to um, have six weekly meetings doing some training with the staff, but also going and have a coffee with them and just checking in with their their morale. You know, are they happy with what's going on in the office? They're happy with the business at the moment, uh, or you know, the clients, you know, the work that they're doing, the hours that they're doing. How do they feel? Um, is there areas that they would like to get into? So. You know, I had a staff member that was happy enough doing the bookkeeping, but she really loved to do training. So we retweaked the business so that she, that you know, I'd go out and find some more training and start focusing on the training side of things because she really loved to do that. So it gave her a sense of um, satisfaction because, you know, she was doing work that she loved. So she's going to be more loyal to you as well because you are providing um you know, what they want as well, you know, the satisfaction, improving their working life as well. Okay, so the last one is around the exit strategy. So although many of you probably are not planning on exiting, maybe anytime soon, but you will exit. It is inevitable. And what I suggest is that you prepare for your exit sooner than later. So you want to at, le at least have three years before you do exit. So if you are planning and exiting in three years, you need to start now in preparing for that. But when I was planning for my exit, it wasn't though I was going to sell my business in 2015. I didn't know five years earlier or even one year earlier. There was no plan to sell it, but I wanted to have my business ready in 2015 for a sale or a passive income so that I had a choice. So we encourage our um, our children, if you like, um, to do well in school so they can have choices at the end of the day, so they can choose their uni and their degree, you know, their courses they want to do. So it's very similar to your exit strategy. So if your business is ready in five years' time that you have, you know, you've done your planning, you don't know your vision, you've, you're only engaged with your, your ideal clients, you're totally automated, you are no longer being dependent, you know, the clients are um, not dependent on you, they are going straight to your staff for their answers and their work and, you know, the conversations are going there. They don't need to come to you day to day. Then... You can sit back and say, okay, you know, uh, do I want to sell this year? Um, if something might have come up that you do, you're ready to go out. So at least you are prepared. It is ready to go. It is, you know, fully automated, independent. Um, everything's set up so somebody else can walk into it. So that's, that's why I say work yourself out of a job. And that's what, you know, we're trying to achieve in in building up your bookkeeping business is work yourself out so that you not are, you are not reliant on. So my 
the five years that I engaged my mentor before I sold my business, it was all about achieving that, you know, that um, business, that level, the staff, me not working in it, so that, you know, I could walk away. But it's also, you also need to think about who you are going to sell it to. Who is the ideal person you want to sell it to? Now, I had in my mind it was going to be an accounting firm because if I've got over 120 clients, then um, that accounting firm has got 120 possible clients that they can sell other services to. So even though, you know, I'm just doing bookkeeping, obviously you've got finance and estate planning and and mortgage broking and obviously tax. Um, There are so many services that, tax accountants provide to their clients that if they were to be, you know, to buy 120 clients that they can on sale, it is so much more value to them than, um, you know, just a bookkeeping business, I guess. But So that was my thought I was going to sell it to an accounting firm. But also I could have sold it to a, a very good business person, somebody that can walk in as a leader as a you know entrepreneur or a business owner, and uh, manage the staff because the staff manage the clients. I no longer manage the clients; they manage their own workflow um, and their, their client work. I had very little involvement. I had admin staff overviewing uh, the lodgements, um, and, you know, making sure that it was all done on time. I had you know the staff were either doing compliance reviews like BAS reviews. Or I had an accountant at one stage um, overseeing all of that stuff. So when it came to me, I was only reviewing it for 15 minutes. So um, we'd had so many tweaks out of it. We'd, you know, train the staff what they need to be looking for. So if a business person was to come in and, and just be involved in managing the staff, having a relationship with the clients, onboarding new clients, doing the marketing, just, you know, operations manager running the business, well, then that was another option as well. So that's where I wanted to to get to. So I have done quite a bit of talking. So are there any questions uh, that you would like to ask of me uh, before I get into the couple of offers that I do have? I should have uh, mentioned earlier that you could post any questions up there if you wanted to. So let me know if you've got any questions about, you know, any of the content that we've talked about today. Transform your bookkeeping business this year with the Bookkeeping Business Mastery course. Today's offer gives you a full 12 months access to the Bookkeepers HQ training portal. Fortnightly live webinars with myself. Learn a developed system for bookkeepers. You'll also get downloadable PDF checklists and templates that you can use instantly with your business. As a special offer, if you act now, you'll also receive a one hour, one-on-one session. In this session, we will focus solely on you and your business. Do you need some clarity about your ideal business? Do you need a jump start to find your direction? Or do you just need to brainstorm a topic to get some better answers and direction? As a qualified trainer and business systems expert, I will help you focus on solving issues and getting your business strategy right. Bookkeepers HQ will help get your business back on track so you can reap the rewards. Book in a one hour session to get focus on an area of the business that is currently blocking you from taking action. Claim your one hour bonus one-on-one strategy session now.